So it's that exciting time for gaming smartphone fans where we've got lots of big launches all landing at once. We've only just had Isus's mighty ROG Phone 6 and now along comes the Red Magic 6 to take it on with some proper chest pounding specs like that Snapdragon 888 chipset. You've got a seven factor cooling system and of course the obligatory RGB arse lights. The Red Magic 6 will be available to pre-order from April the 6th, so you'll have to hold tight then to find exact uh, regional pricing and everything. But what I'm going to do now is whip the Red Magic 6 on out of its box, take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software, and give it an extensive gaming test with full benchmarking to see how it handles the likes of Genshin Impact on the maximum detail setting. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! All right, so what you get bundled in the box is, of course, naturally one Red Magic 6, one funky porky pin to get your SIM in there, one power adapter, which in my case is the Asian version because this is an Asian review model, one extremely on-brand USB cable, and that's your whack. Very straightforward, certainly none of the pizzazz that the ASUS ROG 6 box had. All right, so that's the formalities out of the way. Now let's check out the Red Magic 6. So probably won't shock you too much if I say that the Red Magic 6 is pretty bloody blatantly a gaming smartphone from the moment you pull it out of the box. You've got a glass backing, all nice and shiny as you can see there, that's going to pick up fingerprints, scuffs and grease are rather easy unfortunately. You've then got a bit of metal legend and a Gorilla Glass around front to hopefully keep that gorgeous display free of scratches. And sadly the Red Magic 6 is only available in this one hue which is known uh, rather apocalyptically as Eclipse Black. Of course you do get little splashes of red here and there, again very much on brand including on the logo down beneath and the game space button on that edge. So at least the phone isn't completely dour. And it's definitely worth pointing out as well that while my review sample has this random little 10 cent games logo here on the arse end, the actual global version of the Red Magic 6 will not, so you can just completely ignore that. Of course, as with most gaming smartphones, the Red Magic 6 certainly has a bit of a heft to it. It's 220 grams, uh, but you know, most of the time you'll be clutching it like this, so you'll barely even feel it. All right, looks like we've got some juice in that battery already. So let's get the Red Magic 6 all set up and then check out some of that sexy hardware and software. And if you are going to be sticking your SIM inside the Red Magic 6, you'll see that it is a dual SIM device. Well, a dual SIM device, but there is no space for any micro SD memory cards. All right, so my ZTE Nubia Red Magic 6 all set up and ready for action. And this is what you presented with the first time you booted up. And I've got to say, not the most attractive setup. So you're definitely going to have to do some customization here. Thankfully, that's not an issue. You've got Android 11 OS with a good bit of Red Magic 4.0 slathered on top. This gives you quick toggles for some of your main gaming features, including the cooling system and that crazy RGB mentalness going on around back, which is known as colorful light effect in this menu. You've also got fast access to features like the screen recording. You can also change up the screen refresh rate as well, which as you can see there is set to 90 hertz by default, but goes all the way up to 165. Okay, so let's start making this thing look a little bit less CAC. Okay, so I've made some changes, increased the grid size, changed up the wallpaper and stuff. I'm still not a fan of the blocky icons, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to do something about that later. Uh, but there's no easy way of doing that in the home screen settings, unfortunately. They are rather limited. No such complaints once you dive into the settings menu, though. You've got plenty of different options that you can play around with here. You do, of course, have an always-on display that you can get on the go. Lots of different options to play around with in there. Some of them a bit more random than others. I'm quite liking the jazzy analog clock though, definitely a good one. And you do also have a few different themes that you can play around with if uh, that's your bag, they're all very sort of typical generic gamer phone efforts though. You can also customize the uh, lights on that back end as well, so you can get them uh, set up as notification lights, you can have them flashing, breathing, doing whatever you fancy. This right here is the scintillation mode, in case you were wondering. And in here is also where you set up uh, the in-display fingerprint sensor, you can also have a uh, face unlock as well if you fancy a bit of that. And so far, Touchwood seems to work really, really well. Nice and nippy and responsive. And you'll certainly get a nice clear view of whatever game you happen to want to smash through here on the Red Magic 6 because it's a 6.8 inch AMOLED display. Sadly, it is only full HD plus resolution, not quad HD plus like some of the more premium gaming smartphones, but I found that the visuals were still nice and sharp. I really enjoyed the poppy visuals with the default vivid mode, but you can scale that back. You've actually got an sRGB and a P3 color gamut mode and you've got full support for 10-bit colors on this thing so nice natural looking visuals and if you want to be gaming outdoors on the move no worries about those brightness levels because bump this thing up to the max the red magic 6 will basically burn holes in your eyeballs and if you're just chilling at home it's also possible to dock the red magic 6 you've got full display port connectivity and that type c usb port down below so you can hook up to a big old tv a monitor a projector whatever you fancy and like pretty much every gaming smartphone out there, you've got a stereo speaker set up, although sadly, one of those speakers 
speakers is mounted on the bottom edge. They're not both front firing like you get on the likes of the ROG 6. I still found the output was good though when you're gaming it does give you a kind of a spatial indication of where shit is flying in from so you know exactly which way to scurry. But if you do get a bit of gaming headset action on the go the good news is you've got full DTS Ultra X support for that true surround sound capability. All right now to get onto the good stuff and when you want to get your game on what you'll need to do is flip this little crimson switch on the edge of the Red Magic 6 here and that will get you booted up into the game space. I'm just going to hold the Red Magic 6 up to my uh, mic and you can probably hear the internal fan has already kicked into life and it's really going at it. That's one noisy bugger. I will be fully testing the cooling setup here on the Red Magic 6, but you can actually knock off that fan if the noise of it is starting to disturb you slash other people around you. It's the quick tap like so. And I quite like the game space. It's not quite as fully featured as some alternative options on some other gaming smartphones, again, like the ROG phone, but it just gives you fast, easy access to all the games you've got installed, plus various gaming options. You can keep track of exactly how much of your life you've pissed away playing games. You can also change up the general settings, with the likes of the RGB lights, the cooling system, all that good stuff. But anyway, that's plenty of waffle. Let's actually crack on with the benchmarking and see exactly how the Red Magic 6 handles a bit of Genshin Impact on those higher detail settings at 60 FPS. Now first up, when you're actually in a game, you can quickly and easily drag out the game space settings menu like so. This gives you fast access to all of the options that you want to be uh, hitting when needed. So for instance, you can turn that fan on or off once again. And it just gives you a nifty little animation to show that the fan is starting up. Not that you'll need it, of course, because you can bloody hear it quite clearly. Other noteworthy features include the aiming assist. What this actually does is just adds a reticule to the middle of your screen, as you can see there. So if you don't have any kind of target on your shooting game, then this can just help out a bit. And as you can see, you can change up the color and the size of the thing as well. You can also set up macros. Uh, you've got a screen record function. You've got the 4D shock as well, which only supports a select number of games. Unfortunately, Genshin is not one of them. As with most gaming modes, you've also got the ability to block any messages and calls from coming in as well, so you can stay completely 100% focused. As you can see there, you can load up mini apps as well for the likes of your WhatsApp and things like that. So you can uh, get some of that on the go without actually having to quit out of your game. Particularly handy with the, uh, the Chrome support. That means you can jump into a walkthrough if you're in a particularly tough bit of a game. You can also quickly see your CPU and GPU usage and network speeds as well, but there's no battery information which is incredibly infuriating and you can't even get that on your main Android notifications bar, which is an absolute pain in the arse. And the last feature I want to show you is setting up the shoulder triggers as well, because you've actually got two touch sensitive haptic feedback triggers here on the top end of the Red Magic 6. And setting this up is dead simple, basically just turn them on and then you just need to drag these little on-screen icons to whichever on-screen controls you want to map them to. So for instance, I'm going to map the left trigger to my magic button and my right trigger to my attack. You can tweak the sensitivity if you like as well. And as you can see, you've also got the vibration feedback option, which I'm going to leave on. So what you've got powering the Red Magic 6 is Qualcomm's top-end Snapdragon 888. I wouldn't accept anything else on a proper dedicated gaming smartphone. That tasty bit of Adreno 660 GPU action means that the action is kept pretty smooth, even in Genshin Impact, even on those top detail settings at 60 FPS. I did see a couple of little fluctuations where the frame rate dropped just ever so slightly, but that was generally during pretty intense moments and the gameplay certainly stayed nice and smooth. For the duration. I really enjoyed using the touchscreen controls in the likes of Genshin Impact. The 350Hz multi-touch response rate here on the Red Magic 6 means that everything just happens immediately. As soon as you poke or swipe that display, you'll see it actions replicated in-game. But it is certainly a godsend having those dual 400Hz shoulder triggers as well. Definitely for more complicated games like PUBG, Call of Duty, things like that. Saves you having to fumble around trying to find the reload button, things like that, which got easily missed. Absolutely zero latency as you would hope and expect. The haptic feedback isn't exactly particularly strong. It's about as powerful as a flea's fart, to be perfectly honest, but it's better than nothing. Because if you're going to be gaming for a while, the Red Magic 6 will definitely start to get toasty. And that's where the ICE 6.0 cooling system comes in with its seven methods of heat transfer. That's right, seven. I'm not even kidding. You've got that internal fan, of course, which we know and love already. You've also got an internal vapor chamber in there. You've got copper piping. You've got the usual graphite layers. You've got the thermal gel. You've apparently got a couple more that I can't even remember off the top of my head. I did knock off that rather noisy, pesky fan while I was gaming on Genshin Impact on those maxed out detail settings just to see if it really made a difference. And let me tell you, it actually does. I did notice that back end getting warmer without it on. And so with that fan active, went back to 
Genshin Impact and Gamebench reported that the internal temperature hit around sort of 42 degrees and then fluctuated between sort of 41 and 42 with that cooling system in full flow. Now so you didn't see any crazy throttling of the performance while I've been gaming for quite some time compared with if I'd just been gaming for a couple of minutes the cooling system does seem to do its job. All that said though if you are going to be charging up the Red Magic 6 at the same time as you're gaming I'd probably recommend getting the Red Magic Ice Dock which is basically a big fat external fan sits there on the back and just helps again to keep the phone cool. You know if those seven cooling methods aren't enough for you. Battery life in particularly stunning here on the Red Magic though as you might expect from a smartphone that actually has a physical fan wearing away inside it while you're gaming. It's got a 5050 milliamp capacity battery. I found I delivered just over three hours of Genshin Impact action on those higher detail settings before it was completely flat. Don't stress too much though if you've completely drained the Red Magic because it does support 66 watt wired charge and it's called air cooled fast charge so no doubt helped along again by that internal fan. Unfortunately the global version of the Red Magic 6 does only ship with a 30 watt charger. It's going to have to provide your own super bitty big bollocks charger if you want to get those 66 watt speeds. As for the rest of the specs, well you've got a triple mic setup if you want to provide a bit of in-game commentary or just chat with your mates without using a headset. You've also got full 5G support here of course thanks to that Snapdragon 888 chipset plus a tasty bit of Wi-Fi 6E as well so connectivity nice and strong and on the storage front 128 gigs as standard and it is of course UFS 3.1 nice and nippy. So that's pretty much it for our Red Magic 6 unboxing and gaming review video but I will just briefly mention the camera tech as well which rather hilariously wasn't even mentioned at all in the press release I received on the Red Magic 6 that probably tells you how much effort has actually gone into it. And yeah that's perfectly understandable you know the camera tech does tend to be an afterthought on gaming smartphones there probably aren't many people who are buying this thing and then going off and taking macro shots of you know tulips or something. But in case you are interested what you get here is a 64 megapixel primary shooter as you can see you've got HDR smarts there and AI scene uh, detector as well and as you can see here you've got an absolute buttload of bonus features that you can flick between including full pro manual controls and you do actually have a macro mode if you want to get your tulip shots on the go plus your bog standard night mode you've got your portrait mode as well I believe there's a 2 megapixel depth sensor on here as well as an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and then if you want to shoot a bit of video as you can see there you can shoot full HD at either 30 or 60 FPS and same for 4K as well. And if you really want to bump up that resolution, well, why not get a bit of 8K action on the go? Because what you might be more interested in here on the Red Magic 6 is the front face and selfie snapper. It's only an 8 megapixel effort, unfortunately, but it should be all right if you're just going to do a simple bit of Twitch stream and something like that. Seems to be a little bit thrown by the lighting in the studio here, but still keeping me reasonably sort of sharp and in focus. And I think that sums up uh, my feeling and general state of mind right now perfectly. So that right there in a nutshell is the Red Magic 6. Definitely a well-specced gaming smartphone. Not quite perfect. Uh, doesn't have you know, some of those premium software and hardware features of the ROG 6. Certainly doesn't have the same accessory support of that bad boy. But what you do get is that souped up Snapdragon 888 chipset backed by shed loads of RAM. You've got some of the essential gaming features like those haptic feedback shoulder trigger buttons. And although I sadly don't know the UK price under the Red Magic 6 at the time I shot this video, I can guarantee you this thing is going to be cheaper than that ROG 6. So anyway, that's my experiences with the Red Magic 6. It'd be great to hear your own thoughts, comments, uh, personal views on life in general down in the comments below. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that with the little notifications bell. I can't even speak anymore and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.